Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're live from Odessa, Florida. It's Wednesday night. Hallelujah. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. We've been going to church for so long on Wednesday night. I just think that's what everybody does on Wednesday night. That's what we do. We've been going to church on Wednesday night for close to 30 years. Yeah, at least 30 years. That was longer than that. No, it was well over that. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, we bless you and we praise you and we worship your name and we give you thank you. Well, we have been doing an interesting, we started talking about an interesting new uh, a series of weapons of our warfare. And uh, you could go along on that a long time because, you know, the, the Apostle Paul said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness and high right. Right. And uh, that's where our battle is. It's not against people. And there may be spirits that come on people and that sort of thing. But the reality is that our, the, our, we wrestle yes. not against flesh and blood. We shouldn't anyway. We're not, we're not uh, supposed to. And you know, one of the tricks of the devil, one of the, one of the, one of the best tricks that the devil uses, because he's been around a lot longer than you have, and uh, he's, uh, he's, he's well acquainted with what tricks work and what don't. And in your life, he'll begin to, you know, test you out on different things and, and, and test you and, and uh, uh, you know, jab you certain ways to try to find out what works best in you, you know. And, uh, and, and he does find out, he does get that. And he, he, he learns, you know, how you're gonna get riled up and how you're gonna get crossways with the things of God. But the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and reasonings and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and being in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience has been fulfilled. What he's saying is that the battleground is the mind. That's when it's where Satan's battleground is, is in your mind. And that's where he comes to change your thinking or to make you think that God's word doesn't work or to make you right. think that God is not able or to make you think that God is not uh, capable. You know, we went to the doctor one day and the gills had a, a leg that was bothering her. And uh, so we went to the doctor. I don't remember exactly why we went to the doctor. I guess maybe she was having a little pain or something like that. And the doctor did some x-rays and he said, well, he said, I can see that it was broken, but it, it's healed. And, uh, and, and Gail said, well, you know, we, we prayed about it. We believed God and God healed me. And uh, he said, well, I, I can see that it was broken and, and, and that it was healed. And he said, I, he, said uh, he said, listen, I'm a believer too. And he said, you just don't, you know, you just don't hear that. <laughs> and he said, listen, he said, if God healed you, well, more power to you. It's fantastic, you know, but it's just, it's not something that, you know, the doctors don't heal that very often, you know. And I went to my doctor one day and he diagnosed me. I had, I had pneumonia. And he said, uh, he said, well you, well, you got pneumonia. That's what's wrong with you. And I thought, well, you know, I said, I, I don't understand how that could happen because I have a covenant with God. You know, I have a covenant with God and I'm not supposed to get sick. I'm not supposed to get those kinds of things. And he said, well, you, you got it anyway, you know. So, uh, and now he's a born again believer uh, and uh, went to Oral Roberts and did his medical training at, at Oral Roberts and so forth. And uh, so uh, I had a dream a few days later and uh, the Lord spoke to me in a dream, and, and he said that the reason that uh, I had gotten that, that illness was that I had gotten an unforgiveness towards somebody, and I had just opened the door, you know, to the devil. And, uh, you know, he, he didn't have to tell me what to do. I knew what to do. You know, you get out of unforgiveness as quick as you can, and you forgive the, the, uh, the person and, and you go on, you know. And uh, so that's what the deal was. I just had to forgive the guy and go on. And uh, so, the, you know, I was telling my doctor that, you know, and said, well, you know, I, I, I said I had a dream. You know, I told you I had a covenant with God. I wasn't supposed to get sick. 
And I had this dream, and the deal was that I opened a door by uh, unforgiveness, you know, and he looked at me like, you know, I had lost my mind. <laughs> he doesn't hear that very often either, but, you know, that is the reality of who we are. I have a covenant with God. And he told me, he specifically told me in his word in Psalm 103, forget not all your benefits. He heals all of your diseases. You know, interestingly enough, he doesn't run through in Psalm 103, he doesn't run through every one of the benefits. There's a whole lot more than just healing all your diseases. But he, interestingly enough, he highlights that one. And uh, that's a big deal. So, you know, the, the, the reality is we have a, a covenant. And think of it this way. When you got born again and you accepted Jesus Christ in, as, as your Lord and Savior, uh, you all of a sudden stepped into a new war. There was a, it really wasn't the new war. The devil was always around and he was always picking on you. But when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he, he turned a real hatred on you and uh, began to uh, hate you with more and more of a vengeance and more and more uh, of a passion. And began to begin to go out of his way to, to, to afflict you and to take advantage of you and things like that. But the good news was that you were handed a tool belt and, uh, or a, a, a weapon, a, a, an arsenal of weapons uh, when you got born again. You were given an arsenal of weapons. The Bible calls them the weapons of your warfare. And those weapons were designed for spiritual enemies. They weren't designed for natural enemies. They were designed to fight spiritual enemies. And, you know, somehow in the church, we just miss that. We, we don't major in, in learning how to use our, our spiritual weapons. And so what the devil does is the devil gets you in a fight knowing that if you don't know how to use spiritual weapons, you're going to use natural weapons. And natural weapons will lose a spiritual battle every right. single time. Amen. Every single time. Right. It's not right. a... Uh, right. So the, right. the weapons of, you know, the weapons of our warfare, it's incumbent upon us to learn to use the weapons of our warfare, to learn how to fight with them, to learn how to use them. They were given to us yes. for expressly that purpose, that we would be the master of the devil, that he would be under our feet, that we would constantly be able to take the authority that Jesus Christ gave us we were able to take authority over him. And uh, so the weapons of our warfare. So we put together a book. Anyway, we're getting ready to publish a few books here. There's a series of books on the different weapons of our warfare. And uh, we talk about that uh, in that. We talk about, you know, do a, a, an analysis of some of the different kinds of weapons of our warfare. Because the reality of the church in today's world is that they have little, if any, knowledge of the weapons and little, if any, knowledge of how to use those weapons. And the reality is that's what we were supposed to be. We were supposed to be spirit. We were supposed to be uh, warriors in the army of God, in the spiritual army of God, using spiritual weaponry. And those weapons, we were supposed to learn them. We were supposed to learn how to use them. And we're supposed to know what situations and circumstances we were to use them in. But the reality is most of the church doesn't really know even what those weapons are, let alone how to use those weapons. So we started here, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, just talking about some of the different weapons. And uh, where I want to go, where I want to go back to is, is uh, on Sunday we we talked about uh, casting out devils, which is one of the which is one of the weapons. And that's one of the ones that we don't talk about a lot, you know, that we don't see uh, operated that much today. Now, now, devils aren't any less prevalent than they were, you know, forever. I mean, the Bible says that Jesus went about the, you know, he went about uh, doing good, preaching uh, good, and relieving or helping or casting out the devils of all those who were afflicted with demonic forces. I mean, that's what he did. He went about uh, he went about casting out devils. Amen. And uh, that means that the people had devils, and, and they did. And uh, they have them today, too. It's just we don't focus so much on them. And uh, in, in the society, wow, that thing is really loud, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know where it is. Um, in the society that we live in today, 
It's even become, you know, you get, you, you, you're, you're an outcast if you even talk about some of those devils, you know. If you even name those devils, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're, you're kind of an outcast. But, you know, between you and I, we'll, we'll name them if we need to. You know? <laughs> because a devil is still a devil is still a devil. We want to call a, we want to call, you know, the, the old expression, you're going to call a spade a spade. I want to call a devil a devil, you know, and, 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 and what they are. And you know the, the the Bible talks about casting out devils, and uh, it, it identifies different kinds of devils. And it's helpful to know you know what those what those those kinds of devils are, and uh, and how you what what you do a, a, about those things. And basically, those devils they kind of shake down. Interestingly enough, they shake down into two basic categories of devils. The first one is devils that are afflicting other people. The second one is devils that are afflicting you. And uh, we, can, we can do a lot more with the devils that are afflicting us than the devils that are afflicting other people. So I'd recommend that we start there, you know, that, that you start with the devils that are afflicting you, you know, because you have greater possibility of changing those because, you know, the, the Bible even talks about that uh, you can cast the devils out, but they can come back. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the Bible talks about a, a, a place being swept clean, you know, when the devil's cast out, it's swept clean. But if nothing comes in there to fill it, nothing comes in there back to, to come, come back again, then uh, there's going to be, it's going to come back, but it's going to come back with more devils, it's going to come back stronger. And you see that like in, in devils of addiction, for example, you know, I mean, I was addicted to tobacco. And uh, I, I remember one time that I, I had quit smoking for, for almost three years. I mean, two and a half, three years. And you'd think, oh man, you know, you, you're on top of it now. You broke that, you know. I mean, it was, it, it was three years. And uh, something happened. And, and um, I ended up smoking a cigarette. And I, I mean, I was right back there again. I was hooked again. One cigarette and I was hooked again. And, and stupid old me, you know, I went through the ag agony of quitting again. And I did it again, you know, after, after a couple years, did it again, you know, I was at a party, I was at a party one night and uh, everybody in the room was smoking and uh, we, were, we had all had a little too much to drink too. That was, a, that was an issue as well. And, uh, but, but everybody in the room was smoking except me. And I thought, I, you know, I'll just have one tonight, you know, and bang, I'm right back there again. You know, it's because that devil, he's just looking for an opportunity to come back. And, you know, we're talking about smoking devils. We're talking right. about addiction devils and right. things of that nature. Right. But listen, all the devils are the same way. You know, right. they get comfortable in a place oh, where devils true. live. Is devils live in things that are called strongholds. That's what the, what the Bible calls uh, casting out strongholds, casting down strongholds. That's what the weapons were for was the destruction of strongholds. What a stronghold is is a place in the mind where thoughts of a certain direction or demonic forces of a certain direction have had an opportunity to build up a stronghold because you've been thinking that way so long, you've been doing that thing so long that a stronghold has been built up. And you have to cast down the stronghold. You have to destroy the stronghold in order to break the, the, the power of, a, of, of the demonic over you. And lest you misunderstand, Everybody has demons. Everybody has devils of some kind. And Shall what? Share a story? Yes, yes. Let me, let that, me just. That yeah. Thank yeah. You. Love that smoky. Yeah. So, when Pastor Kevin, you, you're going to want this mic. When Pastor Kevin had, had quit smoking, uh, we were um, the babies were little. Josh and Caleb were little. There was a university mall, university mall. So, so we're over at the university mall with the kids in the strollers. And we're walking down, and there's a tobacco shop. Tobacco shop, and Kevin liked to smoke a pipe. And Kevin said, okay, well, I'm just going to go over, and I'm just going to, you know, smell the tobacco. <laughs> I'm just going to go over. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I've got the kids in the stroller, you know. And I'm like, oh, okay. I tell you, he was walking in there, and the Holy Ghost said, Go get him out of there. Thank you, Lord. We didn't even know we were going to have five children. 
But that was the, it was the devil wanted him just to go and get comfortable back in that place. And you just can't even go and smell the sniff of tobacco. I mean, he just going in there. The Holy Ghost said, you go get him. Don't you let him. I'm like, and he said, okay, okay, you know. But you just don't even know how subtle the devil is. Oh, it's okay if you just put yourself a little bit, a sniff of the tobacco. But God is so faithful. I mean, it was like, like almost an audible, don't let him go in there. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, oh, you know, another thing, I, mean, I, was, I was addicted to alcohol, too. And uh, I'll notice that I'll be out picking up empty cans, like on one of our properties or something. Somebody will throw an empty beer can, and, and I'll get the, the smell of it on my hands, you know. And I just, just the smell of it on your hands is, there's a pull to it. There's a, there's a draw to it, you know. I mean, a, a, you know, the devils are powerful creatures. And uh, you have the authority over them. You were given the authority. And the reality is certainly one of the weapons of our warfare is the ability to cast out devils. But it works as a result of other things. Number one is authority. See, we were given authority by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ recaptured the authority that Adam had and that Adam lost and that Adam gave to Satan. He recaptured that authority for us. And he gave it to us to be able to use it. And you and I have authority from him to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm you. So you are the authority. You're the master over, over, yes. over devils. But they work because of spiritual authority. Now, spiritual authority is, is, is a, a sort of a master topic in and of itself. There's, there's natural authority in the natural realm, and then there's spiritual authority in the, the, the spirit realm. And sometimes in a given situation, and we'll look at a scripture here in a minute that talks about one of these, but sometimes in a given situation, if you don't have spiritual authority over that situation, you can't cast out the devil in that. And uh, let, let, let's look at the, uh, uh, the, the uh, story of, uh, let me see if I think I've got it written down in here. Where, um, yeah, it's Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 21. Um, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down and praying and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. And oftentimes he falls into the fire and oftentimes into the water. And I brought him to the disciples and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and he said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. Jesus rebuked the devil. What, what does that mean? That means he cast him out. In other words, he cast out, Jesus cast out the devil and the devil departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus and said, why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible for you. How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. He's not talking about the demon. He wasn't talking about the demon goes out by that kind. He was saying unbelief comes out, that kind of unbelief. In other words, there's, there, 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 there are fundamental or, or uh, 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 there, there's an unbelief, there's a layer of unbelief in every human being. And the idea is, as you begin to build your faith, Amen. you go deeper and deeper into those layers, digging up unbelief. Chicken, it's like, like a, a, a chicken chipping hammer, chipping out concrete, you know. As your faith grows, you just go deeper and you go deeper. But there's always another layer down there. And you've got to get down to that layer of unbelief. And yes. you don't know where your layer of unbelief is until you get there, you know. And... and and I, I can remember thinking, gee, I'm, just, I'm a mighty man of faith, you know, and having God just break my bubble, you know, and <laughs> say you really need to be working on your faith, you know. Well, how's a man of faith need to be working on his faith, you know? Well, it's because it wasn't as strong as I was thinking it was, you know. And, uh, and we're all like that. We all think our faith is just a little bit stronger than it really, really is. But there's, there's a fundamental... Uh, uh, you know, they call it a, a, a hardcore. 
In other words, there's a fundamental hardcore level of unbelief that you've got to get down and begin to chip into right. that level. And it's prayer and fasting that gets you into that. It's separation unto the things of God. It's separation unto the presence of God. It is the only way to begin to chip in that layer of unbelief. It, 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 it comes through spending time in the presence of God, spending time in the word and the meditation of those things. It doesn't come in your praise session, you know, when you're having, when you're, when you're jumping up and down, you're shouting and carrying on at the church, which is great. I, I mean, I love doing that too. I have, but that's not going to build your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And I will tell you, and everybody might not necessarily tell you this, but I'll tell you this. That you get it by the word, but you can get it by the spoken word in his presence when he speaks to you. A word that God speaks to you in his presence is, is, a, is a magnified word. It's a word on steroids. It's, it, it takes on a different dynamic altogether than the word that you read in that Bible. And you want that word. You want to get to the place where he speaks to you in your quiet time and, and, and when you're in his presence, you want that word because it's that word that builds faith. It's that word that'll take your faith to a, a, another level. So anyway, so he says, you know, uh, how be this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. And, and so what, uh, what, what happened there is that the Father gave Jesus the spiritual authority. Now, Jesus has spiritual authority over all spirits anyway. Yes. But those disciples, whether they did or whether they didn't, I don't know. What Jesus said was it was because of their unbelief. But you can have uh, a child. We, we had this happen in our, uh, when we had our church in Vero Beach, it happened one night that a parent came in, they brought a child in. And the child had a devil. Right. And, um, and, you know, I wanted to cast the devil out of that child. Right. And, uh, but I just don't think that the parents really were not on board with it, you know. And we were just, we were unable to do it because we didn't have spiritual authority over that situation. The parents had spiritual authority over the child and they were just not willing to, uh, uh, to, to, to give it. So the question many times in the casting out of devils is, You've got to have the spiritual authority over the situation sometimes to be able to uh, do it. Anyway, we had a situation happen this last Saturday where um, we're, we're in a meeting and um, there's a Gail and I are sitting in, in a particular row and on the other side of the aisle, there's another person over here. There's a, there's a, a woman sitting over there in, the, in that row and she is making noises that are inappropriate and making the same things inappropriate, making sounds and the same words that are inappropriate and so forth. And uh, one of the, what, what happens in a, a, a meeting, people will come in and they'll have devils on them and that sort of thing. And what, what will happen is... Even save people. Even save people. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, sure. save people can be possessed of devils. And no question about that. Saved people can certainly can possess devils. No question about that. And this one was a missionary. So she, and she's clearly saved. But, uh, yeah, well, anyway, okay. Yeah. Let me, I'll t I'll, I'll, let me, let me, let, let's don't go there. Let's go, I'll, I'll tell you another story. We were at Creflo Dollars years ago. And the Creflo won't mind me telling this. <laughs> he won't even know. <laughs> anyway, we're at, we're at Creflo Dollars, and we're um, and it's a women's meeting. And in the women's meetings that they did there, they let the women sit in the front, but they made the men sit in the back. And uh, the women could the men couldn't sit in the front of the meeting. So Gail's sitting up in the front, and I'm sitting in the back. And there's a guy back there, and He's making noises. And when the person who's preaching would say something that was, let's say it, it could justify an amen, the guy would say amen, but he'd say it five minutes later and or three minutes later or something. In other words, the time element was inappropriate and it was disruptive is what it was. And so here he is. What he was saying was okay. But he was saying it in a disruptive manner. Right. And he was saying it in a disruptive time frame. Well, that's a devil. There's a devil there. Because what happens in a right. meeting like that is the Holy Ghost begins to unify and begins to bring together people. Because, you know, when you go into a meeting like in that meeting that day, there are probably 
I don't know, two or 3,000 people in that room. There's a lot of people in that room. And you can bet there's a lot of devils that, that are in that room as well. But what happens is that the Holy Spirit gets to work and the Holy Spirit gets busy and he brings these disparate people together in these disparate situations. And even though everybody's a little bit different, the Holy Spirit is the unifying factor or the glue that holds them together. But there can be devils like this guy had that it just didn't get unified. It just got worse and it got worse, you know. But the problem was it wasn't my house, you know. And so I didn't have the authority to go cast the devil out of the guy. He needed to have it cast out in the worst kind of way. But I just, you know, uh, I, uh, it wasn't my house. And uh, so you can't just get up and go cast the devil out of somebody in, in, in a, a, a situation like that because I didn't have the spiritual authority over that. So that is a question in the casting out of devils is, is do you have the spiritual authority over that situation? Now, in this case, the, 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 you know, uh, the, the father of the boy gave that spiritual authority over to, uh, to, to, to Jesus. Um, you know, he, he, here's the thing about, let's go back to that issue of unbelief and prayer and fasting and, 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 and eliminating that, that, that a measure of unbelief. Um, that is the primary way that you drive devils out of your own life is, is through meditation, prayer, fasting, if you will. Maybe fasting is just spending time in his presence. Maybe it's not fasting food. Maybe it's not you know, fasting. Uh, maybe it's not fasting TV. Maybe it's not fasting your phone or something like that. Maybe it's, yeah, it's, just, it's fasting life to get in the presence of God. Yes. So that he can begin to speak with you, and he can begin to take root. And begin, you know, Norval Hayes uh, probably had uh, more uh, experience casting out devils than any human being alive, and uh, it was it was like something he he enjoyed doing. You know, he, he just got a real kick out of doing it. And what he said, he said, there's only one way, two ways really, to get a devil to come out of somebody, and he said, you command it to come out with authority and you take that authority and you don't give in and you don't give up and you stand there and you tell them to go until they go. That's number one. Or he said, you, you tell them to, 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 you tell them to go or you tell them to get out or you tell them to come out. Those are the two ways. Either yes. You get them to the come out or tell them, but that's the way it works. You tell them, that you, you, you got to tell them to go. But you, but in order to do that, you must have authority over that situation and know how to exercise your authority in the realm of the spirit. For example, if somebody came in here and they had um, a devil that needed to be cast out, well, I would have the authority to cast that person out. You would have the authority to cast that person out. You might not have the uh, uh, yeah. person out. Yeah, it, 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 exactly, because that's just, that's kind of the... Uh, uh, that you, you, there, there has to be a spiritual authority. Moreover, your authority in the gospel, your authority, your your recognition of who you are in the spirit, that yes. you can tell that Amen. that devil to go. Amen. Now, there's a couple of different, uh, and and I thought to uh, just mention here. Um, Some, some, there, some, some, some. The, the Bible talks about different types of devils, and I'll ask in the next couple of minutes. We'll just we'll talk about that for a minute. These are are, are, are devils that are actually spoken of in the Bible. A lunatic spirit, Matthew seventeen fifteen, the spirit of an unclean devil, a spirit of uncleanness. You know, we run into that all the time. People that have a spirit of uncleanness, and you can see that. And I'll tell you, you see that in in people that are saved. You know, that they got saved, but they didn't get that spirit and cleanness out. And they talk about, you know, I, I told the story of a, a guy who worked for us, you know, who, who uh, he said, uh, he called me up one, one day, he was working in one of our buildings, and he said that they had um, uh, the cleaning crew the night before had been making pornographic pictures on somebody's copy machine, and they'd left them in the copy machine. He said, oh, the people were horrified. They were just horrified. What do you want me to do with them? I said, well, throw them away. I want you to throw them away. You know? <laughs> and 
He said, you want to see them? And I said, no, I don't want to see them. I want you to, I want you to throw them away. <laughs> so a few hours later, he's actually, I, I meet up with him. He's out here a few hours later, you know. And I said, well, by the way, what did you do with those pictures? He said, I got them in the trunk. You want to see them? <laughs> well, there was an unclean spirit there. It was just an unclean spirit. And, you know, they can, you know, people can have unclean spirits. It's not necessarily just pornographic spirits, but it could be uh, just, just spirits of, of uh, you know, they want to focus on the evil things that people do right. or the improper things that people yes. do right. yes. or the improper things they say or they think about yes. and those kinds yes. of things. Yes. That's an unclean spirit. Yes. And as Luke 4.33 talks about an unclean spirit, blindness there's, there's a, a spirit of blindness, Matthew 12, 22. There's a spirit of dumbness, the deaf and dumb, deaf and dumb spirit. Deaf and dumb spirit, the dumb spirit, Matthew 9, 32. The deaf spirit, Mark 9, 25. Devils of lusts, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's 1 John 2, 16. Seducing spirits, the Bible talks about seducing spirits, 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Uh, with the seducing spirits, birth doctrines of devils. Say that again. Uh, seducing spirits, birth doctrines of devils, which are doctrines that just don't line up with the word. In other words, uh, something like, like, for example, one of the doctrines of devils is that there are sicknesses and diseases that Jesus can't heal. You know, that God, God is unable to heal. God is able to, he's able to give you a new body. He's able to give you new parts. He's able to do, he's able to heal any situation. That's not a common thought, to be frank with you, in, in, in Christianity, you know? And it is a doctrine of devils. That, well, there's some things that even God can't do, you know? That's a doctrine of a devil. There's a spirit of death, you know? We, we had uh, a friend, a lady, lady we're still connected with, uh, he, all these years later, had a child. And, and, you know, she came in one day, and, and we're praying with her over the child. And I saw a spirit of death there, you know? And, and so, you know, what we, what we talked about with this was you have to get rid of that spirit of death. You've got to right. make sure that right. that spirit of death gets yes. out there. Because if it hovers around there too long, she's going to die. Yes. Um, yes. Spirit of fear, Hebrews 2.15. The spirit of lies, the spirit of a liar, John 8.44. I told the story on Sunday about the, this guy that used to work for us. His name was Eddie. And we, uh, we, I called him Eddie the liar. Because he, he, he just lied. He just... He, he, he would lie just to lie. I mean, it was just a remarkable, a remarkable thing. And uh, one of our subcontractors was telling me the other day, he told me a story, and it told me some sort of a wild story. And, uh, and, 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 and he finishes by saying, oh, I just made that up. <laughs> why would they do that? You know, I mean, why would he waste my time telling me some sort of a stupid story that he just made up, you know? It's a doctrine of devils, yeah, and uh, and he's a he's a, of another faith. Let's call him it. Let's, <laughs> let's just say it's another faith. And, uh, <laughs> but those are those are different devils that are specifically mentioned in the Bible that can 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 be and should be cast out. Devils that are on people, you know, the devils that are that, that can be on people. Uh, 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 love of money. The love of money is a spirit, and it's an evil spirit. It's a demonic spirit. And and you know, there's nothing wrong with money. God doesn't mind money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Spirits of envy and jealousy. The Bible says where there's envy and jealousy present, there is every form of evil. That's something the devil likes to lead with. If he can lead with an envy or death and jealousy, or get you over to envy and jealousy. Man, he's got you. The door's open now, right, you know. Right, right. Uh, the, the door's open. A spirit of strife. There are people that live in a, a, a spirit of strife. I know some of these people. Some of them even are related to me, you know. <laughs> people, <laughs> people who live with a spirit of strife, you know, they can, and, and you, know, I, you know, I love the expression. This Irish friend of mine has an expression. He says, well, you, you, you don't have a dog in the fight, you know. Well, they don't have a dog in the fight, but they get in it anyway. You know, they they, 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 they just you know they're looking they're they're looking for a fight to get in. You know, and uh, 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 that's a it's a spirit. There's a spirit of strife, 
and everything. There's a, some people that we do business with, and Gail even constantly reminds me if, I, if I'm doing business with, with one of those people, she'll say, now, you know, there is a spirit of strife on that person, you know, and uh, you just gotta be careful, you just gotta watch out. There's a spirit of strife on that person, and it is, everything ends in strife. Everything ends up bad, badly, you know. There's spirits of addictions. There's, there's uh, uh, um, you know, every kind of spirit that could be on somebody else could be on you too. And, but these are ones that are probably more prevalent upon, you know, us. And um, uh, the remedies, uh, for, particularly for those that are on you, the remedies, Luke 4, 36, you take authority over those things. That's the principal remedy yes. over any form of demonic force, any form of demonic spirit, is to take the authority that God gave you in the name of Jesus or through Jesus Christ. God gave you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions, and that is the principal weapon that you have to, mm -hmm. to tell them to get out, to come, mm -hmm. tell them to come out. The use of your faith is another one, you know, and, and that's the scripture we just talked about, Matthew 7, 20, 21. You know, what, what Jesus was saying was that this devil that we're casting out of this young man requires a higher order of faith to get him out of there. And, you know, if you are a low order of faith, it's a measure of unbelief is what it is. And you, what you want to do is you want to get to a higher measure of faith or a higher measure of belief. Um, and that's one of the ways that you get them out. Is you use your faith that they're going to go and they're not going to come back. You know, there's a, uh, uh, Jesus said in that scripture, you know, that this kind of requires prayer and fasting. What he's saying there is there's kind of, sometimes there's kind of an advanced preparation. You know the devil's going to come. There's a place of advanced preparation of building yourself up in the, you, in, in the Holy Ghost. You know, one thing, you don't allow a devil to speak. You do not, you never allow a devil to speak. I mean, we've had them come into the meeting uh, and, and they begin to talk, you know. You don't give place to the devil, to a devil, to a devil to speak. You don't let him speak. Um, you rebuke them. You cast them out. You tell them to go. You command them to come out. Or you command them to go out. Um, and this was a, this this a, this was a, this was Nor. This is one of Norval's. Norval used to say, "Never give them water." He said, "If they ask for water, you know it's a devil." And you're talking to them. You're trying to cast a cast a, a devil out, and they ask for water. It's because that's. You know, something about the demonic that, that needs water, wants water. And he said, you never, never give them water. I didn't see that in the Bible, but <laughs> he cast out a whole lot of devils. And, uh, you know, and then James 4, 7 says, you resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. You resist the devil. Here, that's the thing about a demonic affliction that you might have personally. You're going to keep seeing it until you get to the place where you can resist it. You know, it's just not going to go away. You've got to be able to resist it. You've got to be able to, to cast it off. Anyway, I, I, you know, I was telling you about the Eddie the Liar, you know. I mean, it was incredible. He just lied about everything. And that you could not trust anything. He was a nice guy. He's a young guy, too, you know. He's a nice, handsome young guy, probably in his 30s or so, mid-30s or so. He was just a liar, you know. The, he had the spirit of the liar. And that is who the devil is, you know. The devil is, the devil is a liar. So the, the casting out or the ability to get devils or demonic spirits off you and the ability to get demonic spirits off other people, those are weapons of our warfare. Those are, those are tools. We ought to be able to learn how to use them. We ought to work on them. We ought to get good at using them so that we don't allow those devils to take authority over us because that's what they really want to do. They want to... Uh, they, 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 they just want to take authority. I'll go back to, you know, one of the things that a devil does is the devil hates, a de devil or a demonic spirit, they hate the spirit of God on the inside of you. And there's, there's going to be like a sandpaper or a rub or something like that. I mean, you can sense demonic spirits on people because you can sense it in your spirit. You know, there's just a, there's a, there's a rub or there's a, a scratching or a, uh, a grading or something like that. Because once again, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of unity. 
And what the Holy Spirit functions to do in any meeting of people, in any gathering of people, is to bring a unity amongst yes. those people. And uh, like in, 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 this is always amazing to me. You know, in, in any kind of a group of, of fairly significant numbers of people, or even smaller numbers of people, people that are worshiping, there'll be people in there that have the worst voices you can imagine, you know. I mean, they just got horrible singing voices, and the Holy Spirit will begin to meld those things together, mesh them together so that you don't notice them, you know. And uh, on the other hand, if there's a devil there, you'll hear the devil, and, uh, and you'll continue to hear that devil, and it'll get worse, and it'll get... We had these, uh, this, uh, this, uh, there were three people that came in one day years ago, and the this witches. was a, a meeting. We, uh, the they were witches. They came into one of our meetings, uh -huh. and uh, the um, this is when we were over in the other building. We had a little more room, uh -huh. and so as we began the worship, they started dancing around, you know. And when when they came in, I, I'd never seen they them before, they dirty. and they were they dirty. I mean, they, they looked, looked like they'd just gotten out of the shower, but they were dirty. You know, there was a, there was a, a, a dirtiness on them, and uh, so anyway, so we start the worship, and the woman begins to dance around in one of the open spaces. She begins to dance around, waving this filthy rag, you know, yeah. this filthy old rag that she had, and making a noise that was like fingernails on a chalkboard. You know? mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do this, but I'm gonna have to go back there. And, get them out of here. And I you know? didn't see them, and I could just hear it. And you, you could I hear it. Worship, Even if you didn't see them, you could hear. just hear it. You know, you knew, you knew yeah. what was there because once again, that spirit of back. unity. See, that's what I thought when we started the worship. I thought, okay, well, if, if I'm just imagining this, the spirit of God gonna is going to bring the unity, unity and yeah. they'll come. But it didn't happen. It was, it was going the other way. And so right. finally, I said, all right, I got to go deal with these people. And uh, James McCurdy was with us there that night. And he was already on his way back there to, <laughs> to get rid of them. <laughs> and they stomped out mad. Yeah. And, you know, and I said, well, who cares? You know, they were devils. And uh, they were witches and demonic uh, forces. The, the, the woods are full of demonic forces out there, folks. And uh, you and I, we were given authority by Jesus Christ to trample on snakes and scorpions, to take authority over every demonic force. That, uh, that would come against us and to operate in the power of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, so we've, so that's casting out devils. It's just one of the weapons of our warfare. We'll begin to talk about some of the other weapons of our warfare because the key is you need to know what the weapons are and you need to know what circumstances you, you use them, you know, because there's sometimes you use this and sometimes you use that, you know, and it's just, it's like the Roman soldier, you know, I mean, the Roman soldier, he had a spear, he had a sword, he had a shield, you know, they had uh, armor that they, they used, they had a helmet, you know, which was to protect their head and that kind of thing. The helmet, sometimes they had like a little uh, uh, spear type thing in it, I guess, to butt their head against somebody or whatever. But there's all kinds of different weapons, you know. And, uh, but our job is because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's to know what they are and to know how to use them. And they, every one of them has this in common. They work by faith. And so you need to be working on your faith because faith is one of the weapons. Faith is one of the principal weapons because it's required to make all the rest of the weapons work. None of the other weapons will work uh, without faith. So you want to be working on your faith. You want to be building your faith. Once again, there's probably no way better to build faith than spend time in the presence of God, spend time in prayer, spend time separated unto God. I mean, you know, that's what fasting really is, prayer and fasting. You know, Jesus said this kind comes out only by prayer and fasting. Fasting is just to separate yourself from the things of the world, separate yourself from carnal things and unto the things of, uh, things of God. So the more you do that, the more you're going to build your faith, the more you're going to work on your faith, and the more you're going to find it, it, it works. We're going to do our uh, summer camp meeting. will be coming up here, and our date is, is that it? Sunday, July the, uh, Saturday, July the 2nd, Sunday, July the 3rd, and the morning of July 4th. No, uh, no, no morning, no, no morning meeting. So we'll just have Saturday and Sunday. We'll have three meetings on Saturday and three meetings on Sunday. 
which is kind of how we've gone to doing the, the camp meetings. And I will tell you that there's something about immersion in the presence of God, something about just immersing yourself in that presence that will get you over to the place where you can hear more clearly, you can see more clearly, you can focus a little bit more clearly as you separate yourself unto God. But those, uh, those camp meetings are wonderful, wonderful activities for that, to get yourself over uh, into, just get yourself over into the place where you're spending time in, uh, uh, in, 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 in the presence of God. So that's uh, Saturday, July the 2nd, Sunday, July the uh, 3rd, and then July 4th, Monday, we have our, our party, uh, the afternoon of July 4th. We do baptisms in the afternoon for people that would like to get baptism, baptized. And uh, so we'll look forward to uh, that. We encourage you, make, make plans to come. Set yourself apart and make, make time to come. It's uh, it, it, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful time. You know when I you know I, I, I realized one of the things I realized was that we uh, and this was something that just came from spending time in the presence of the Lord. When we used to uh, when we had a church over in Vero Beach, we would we would have a meeting here on Wednesday night, then we'd go there and have a meeting there on Thursday night. And there was something about that extra meeting every week. There was something about separating into the presence of God there on that next night where you didn't have somewhere you had to go the next day, you know, and that sort of thing. That just would build our faith and build our resistance. And I felt like the Lord really ministered that to me, that that was something that, that uh, uh, you know, if you're really interested in, in making your faith produce, and making your faith work, you got to put yourself in the place where you're going to be be doing that, where you're going to be separating yourself unto God and from the things of the world and and unto God, so that you can allow God to be, to minister to you and to help you build your faith and build your strength and build your your word volume in Him, build your word level in Him, and the more you spend in that the greater your faith becomes. And the greater your faith becomes, the more victorious you become in using the weapons, but the more victorious you come over the forces of the enemy that are coming against you. And they always are constantly coming against you. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. And uh, if, uh, once again, make plans to try to join us for the camp meeting. I know that you would uh, enjoy it. That it's, uh, it's always a wonderful, wonderful time. And our 4th of July party, I like say we do baptisms in the evening. We have barbecue and that sort of thing and fireworks later on in the evening. It's always a great time. And so once again, we, we invite you and encourage you to come. Thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you. And we will see you on Sunday. Thanks again for joining.